Hello and welcome to the metacognition.org.uk student video on using the Freya model graphic organizer. So this is the last video, so if you haven't seen the others, remember at the end of this to go and check out the rest. And if you have watched the rest after this one, it will be time for you to go and do your graphic organizer quiz to see how well you've learned all about them. So as with the other nine videos, in this video, you're going to learn what the Freya model is, why we use it, how we use it, when we use it, and we're going to go through an example before you practice one yourselves. So this is one a lot of you will have already used, and it's typically looks like this example on the right hand side. So what do we use it for? It's about a more detailed research process into a specific word or a topic. So you put that idea or the topic in the center here, and then you fill in the boxes on the outside. So why do we use, oh, what else can we do, sorry? You can change the title. So sometimes the title's definition, characteristics slash draw, examples and non-examples, just aren't the best topic areas for investigating that word or that area. So you can change those titles if you need to, to make this frame model a little bit more helpful. It's a fantastic revision tool. So before you come up to do a quiz, an exam, a little uh, class quiz, whatever it might be, you can do your own frame model for everything you know is going to be on that test and see how much you can remember, how much depth you can put in there and how accurate it is because you can then go back and check what you've written, uh, compare it to everything you've written in your book. And it's great to see memory. So don't just copy stuff from your book onto a frame model, because even though that's a little bit helpful of organising your notes, it doesn't test to see how much you know. It's really important to close your notes and see how much you can remember just from memory. So how do you use it? Like I say, it's relatively easy. You put your thing, the thing you want to look at in more detail in the centre. So, for example, it might be adding fractions. And then you just go around and if you're happy with these uh, topic, uh, these topic titles, you just go around and you just fill them in in as much detail as you can. The more detail, the more helpful. So what could you do with it? So you can identify topics that you struggle with. So if you know that you're struggling to complete a topic, if you can't complete a frame model on a topic, do you need to go back and revise that one more possibly? You might also find that you've got weaknesses when you're doing a frame model. So maybe you find it really easy to do a definition and to draw out an example, but maybe you're really stuck when it comes to examples. So maybe that's something that you need to revise. You could also compare it with other topics and try to add detail. So a lot of topics overlap, so maybe compare different topics and see if there's any way that they can come onto each other's frame models. And then a really good way to strengthen your learning is to have a look at the non-examples. Once you've filled in the other three boxes, think, what are the most common mistakes someone else would make? If I was to make a mistake here, don't just put in a, a, silly, a silly mistake, put in a mistake that you think someone might do genuinely because they don't understand and put those into your non-examples. That really stretches how much you're thinking and how well you're going to do on a topic. So you can see here again, an example on the right of what it looks like. And on the left here, these are some examples. So we're looking at turtle, definition, characteristics, examples, and maybe for these non-examples, they could make it even better. A lot of people can confuse a turtle with a tortoise. So that would be a very common misconception or a terrapin. That would be a very common misconception. So how do we produce one? First thing you do is you fill in or you draw your frame model and you fill it in with the titles and the centre topic. I'm going for food. So you can see that I've drawn it out. You might be given a template and I've just written food in the centre. Nice and straightforward now. You just go around and you just fill in the different sections. So my definition is there. I've put in some characteristics. I didn't really want to draw anything because I can't draw. So I've put in some characteristics, put in some examples and I've put in some non-examples. I've tried to think of things that people might eat that really and food, so a lot of kids eat Lego. Toy food can sometimes be quite convincing. Tables and sofas, a lot of toddlers like to eat, and I've got experience of that. Letters, a lot of dogs eat letters, even though they're not food. And a lot of dogs and animals and well, toddlers eat grass and trees as well. You'd be surprised. So what I want you to do now is to produce a Freya model for sport. So draw out your template, put sport into the middle and then go around and fill in as many details as you can. Then come back, have a look at my example, see how good yours is and see if you can add any more details to it. 
Thank you for watching. And once you've finished this, if you've watched all of the other graphic organizer videos, go now and have a go at the graphic organizer quiz. So in that quiz, you're going to be tested to see if you can pick the right graphic organizer for the different types of things that you might need to do. And if you can, then you are ready to go and smash it with these graphic organizers. And if not, then you can identify which ones you're confused on and come back and watch these videos. So good luck with your graphic organizer and I will see you over on the quiz. Thank you.